All right. Um, okay. Hopefully everyone is good. Let's just start it. Um, very, very busy day today. We're going to have um, ECB, you know, maybe the video has been out. Let me check. Uh, ACY. Supply securities. Videos. Oh, there we go. So me and Nathan, we've we've made a video today talking about the ECB. Um, because um, hey Matthew, hey um Switzy. So you know everyone is talking about ECB today. Today is the day that ECB will whatever cut, maybe hike, um, or maybe stop, not do anything. Um, what do you guys think? I want to start the webinar already today asking you, what do you think is going to happen? And we go from there. I want to see some, I want to see some interaction right there, guys. What do you guys think it's going to happen? You think it's, um, you think it's going to cut 25 basis point or do you reckon they want cut and, um, they will maintain as it is. Some people think it's going to cut. All right. Okay. Um, now, let me show you something here from Bloomberg. All right. Um, let me just get the link for it. Just a second. Where is this? Oh, I have to switch to my new version. There we go. Okay, maybe it's a right word. So, let's see. Uh, maybe it's this one. I don't think so. Let me just check if it's this one, guys. Uh, no, it's not this one. Uh, let me grab the actual link because I was discussing with Peter Pan today. <clears throat> It's not this one, no. Let me grab it here, just a second. Ah, oh, seems like it's not gonna work, but anyways. So 69% um, of the market, oh, I know where I can show, here. Uh, there we go, this one. So 69.6% .6 of the market is expecting three cuts from the ECB this year, all right, in 2024. Um, and eight points and twenty one point seven percent is expecting four cuts, and two percent uh, eight point seven percent is expecting two cuts. So this is Bloomberg, all right. This is the Bloomberg server of economists conducted in May twenty four to twenty nine, um, and most of the economists are expecting well seventy percent of them are expecting two cuts this year. Now, investors have already. Uh, let me open the image. I have already paired um, as a, the, you know, in December 2024, they are expecting as 0.75 base points to be cut, but in June 2024, they are expecting 0.24% to be cut. So basically, it's always around 0 0.25, okay? So most of the market is expecting 25 base points of cut from the ECB. Now, if we look at the consensus, this is actually what the consensus is thinking, all right, a 25 base points cut. Um, from five, from 4.5%, the way down to 4.25%, so 0.25%, right? I've explained it already, Zero point, every 0 0.01 represents 0.01%. So it's exactly um, the same thing as 0.25%, 0.25 base points, all right? So basically um, expecting 0.25% of a cut for the rate decision. Now, um, what this could occasionate with uh, the euro dollar, right? Because everyone wants to trade the euro dollar uh, when this happens. Well. Probably most of everyone wants to trade euro dollar when that um, when tonight happened. Now, I do think 
that there is a possibility, of course, you know, every time that a central bank, most of the times, that a central bank cut, right? So let's say that the ECB will cut, the market will basically go down. Why did this happen? I want to know from anybody. Why did the market go down? Why did the currency go down when the central bank cuts interest rate? <laughs> no one? Okay. So the, the, the market goes down when a central bank cuts the interest rates primarily because of what we call the rates. All right. So let's let's call the denomination as an R. So the R before was 5%, and then they do a cut, and the new R will be 4%. So there is a swap. So there is a swap of less or 1%, okay? So there is a swap of less or 1%. So this swap of a less or 1% means minus 1% of someone's money on an yearly basis, okay? So for instance, the banks, right? So how do the banks make money? One of the ways that banks make money is loan, is true loans, all right? So basically banks, one of the ways that they make money is through loan. So they take your capital that you do the deposit, right? The deposit, and then they loan it out, right? To someone else. Who is it? I don't have a clue, right? It may be a business. It can be someone buying a property. It can be like a private loan for buying a car. It can be, maybe it can be, um it, it just depends it's it's very it's very different from different areas all right so uh we always depend but this is not interest to us we we don't we don't care where the money goes we only cares of how much is the central bank right now uh the positive facility right so sorry sorry interest rates so the the interest rate is a different, remember, I've explained already what R, the R is the rate, is different from the cash rate, all right? The cash rate is what the retail people get from a standpoint of banks, and the interest rates is what the institutions institutions get. Um, I'm, I don't mean like institutions like uh, like a big business or corporation. No, I don't mean like that. I mean like the uh, commercial banks. Okay, so let's say um, HSBC, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and those ones, because we need to understand that uh, the central bank. Let me grab another. Okay, so basically, the central bank will decide what rate is will be, right? So that's gonna be a 5%. Um, and then this central bank have under them the, <coughs> sorry, the commercial banks. I think it's with a double one, commercial banks. Okay. So this, so the CB have a, a rate, uh, interest rates, target on 5%, and then the commercial bank will have a cash rate, usually around um, like seven, six to seven, right? So they charge 1.5 to 2% on top of the 5% of the cash of the interest rate. So let's say five, let's go to 6.5 to seven, All right? Usually, this is what um, the cash rate, what me and you will get when we want to loan a home, when we want to get a loan, all right? But the commercial bank is taking money from the central bank through 5%. So they're taking it cheaper, of course. And then they're giving the money to us, mortals, like 
me and you here. This one as well. Let me do like a nice hair. That's a nice hair. Um, so me and you here, we are paying 6.5 to 7%. While the, let's say, HSBC, JP Morgan, or Credit Agricola, or Goldman Sachs, they are paying 5%. And then they're giving to us at 6.5%. And then we take the money and we go and buy property. That they own the property <laughs> because we haven't paid the loan 100%. So they, they usually you do an initial deposit of 20%. So you only own 20% of the property. You don't own 100% of the property. So who are the biggest real estate agents? Banks. All right. I'm just joking, but this is actually the truth. If you stop for a, thing, stop for a minute and think about it, and this is actually what happens, all right? Now, forget about all of these things I've just drawn here, and let's talk why the currency goes down. Now, uh, say you are an investor and you have $50 million to invest, right? Hopefully you do. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Someone talking, Santi. I can't. I can't hear your voice. Wait a minute. Maybe my computer. Oh, wait a minute. Just a second, guys. Wait a minute. Um, can you? Can you guys hear me? Yes, okay. Were you talking something, Santi? Oh, no, okay, because for me, um, for me, it was saying that um, you were talking something. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, let's get back to the, the line. Okay, all right, so coming back here. I can hear you. Okay, that's perfect. All right. Um, now, um, so let's say you have a $50 million, right? All right. So you have $50 million. Hopefully, one day we all have this money and you want to invest this. With a $50 million, what would be the smartest, a uh, bit of a financial planner here, what would be the smartest choice to put your money on? Would it be on the forex market? Definitely not. Would it be on properties? Maybe. Would it be on a business idea? Yeah, it could be. But if this is all you got, definitely not. Um, you would put on fixed income, right? Fixed rates. So you would get paid yearly 5%. All right. So let me bring up my calculator. Um, calculator. This one. So let's say we have a fifty million dollar. Okay, and we are doing five percent per year. All right, five percent per year. That's two million five hundred dollars per year divided by twelve. We're getting paid two hundred and eight thousand dollars per month doing nothing. That's not bad, isn't it? Two million dollar salary, no taxes on that, and you're getting like two hundred and eight thousand dollars a month. You can live a life with that. Definitely, you can. Now, this is on top of five percent. All right, this is a five percent. So let's see how much it would be. Four point seventy five percent. So that would be two million a year. That would be only one hundred and ninety-seven thousand dollars. So now it's decreasing. Now let's go for three percent. Oh, 
that's not good then. We came all the way to up to from 208,000 now to 125,000. If we decrease to 2.2, 2.5, that's going to be 108,000. So basically, $100,000 gone from nowhere just because the central bank cut the interest rates. So this is exactly what happens with the currency market. When we have higher rates, we have a higher currency because people will look to buy that currency to have on the bank, on whatever bank it is, England, Europe, sorry, Europe, US, Australia, they will transfer the money to that so that we would pay a demand to that currency and the market will look at positively to these and we react positively to you. But now when the central bank cuts the rates, the currency goes down because people are taking the money out from there and putting somewhere else. Okay, this is pretty much it. So here, euro goes up and here, euro goes down. Any other currency, it could be JPY, it could be Australian dollar. I'm talking about a single currency, all right? I'm not talking about the whole um, currency. I'm talking about a single currency, here. okay? Um, everyone understand it? Everyone good with that? Oh, good. No questions. Can I move on? Okay. Oh, good then. Now, so what will probably happen tonight? Okay. What will probably happen tonight? If they do cut, okay, if they do come here and they do cut from 470, from 452. For 425, the market will probably crash a bit. All right. And that will be it for today. But that afterwards, the market will react positively. Okay. So this is sort of what I'm expecting. Maybe, maybe we could see something like this. That would be very, very huge. Okay, very, very huge. Um, or because this is the target that haven't been hit yet. All right. So maybe can happen. Maybe. I just make sure <coughs> to understand the risks on, when trading CFDs. Um, but that's probably what I'm looking for, to be honest. Okay, because that's a very clearly, very clear zone that haven't yet been captured. Uh, when we look, we have a bigger one here, but um, still, still, I do believe that the market can go down. If this is the scenario, if they actually cut, okay, if they don't cut then it's a completely different scenario. But let's say if they don't cut, I don't think the market will move anyway. I think it will be stagnated as it is at this moment. It won't go anyway. It may go a bit up, um, you know, a bit down, but this is, this is, this is all. I mean, it won't move crazily anyway. So, um, Hopefully they do cut because that's going to be a very nice trade in my opinion. Um, you know, to, to drag euro dollar down all so the way to one hundred seven five, one hundred seven four five. Um, but if they don't cut, maybe we can see euro dollar going up on 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 the areas of one ten or next week, right? Because the economy sort of needs that cut, right? and then when the market sees that they will okay they will understand that yes this is a possibility of a good a good rhetoric on the market now if we look to usd cat because the cat had a cut yesterday 
This is exactly what I'm looking to happen with Iridol. Okay. But let's do the... And I... Um... Oh, there we go. This one. This is sort of what I'm looking to happen with the euro dollar all the way down and then afterwards up. Okay. Yeah, if they pause, if they don't do anything, the market won't move. All right. All the tension will like, oh, so they didn't they didn't do anything. So the, the market will probably react positively to these on the euro side. So it will probably um shoot up, but that will be sort of eat. All right. It won't like uh too crazy okay um <clears throat> so this is what i'm expecting for euros is a sort of similarity here with the usd cat um let me do again but remembering that usd cat have done on the other side right now if we look to EuroJPY, if we look to EuroJPY, there's more possibility of EuroJPY coming higher of those highs for next week than actually coming back down. All right, um, just because it seems seems a very 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 hard times for the Japan. And they probably won't hike again this year. Just looking, do you think that the pause could be good for long on Eurocat since they cut rates? That's a question. Let's have a look on that. Yeah, look at this. Yeah. What else we got? Yeah. Look, I can't tell you what to do and what not to do. But this does look good like a good trade, actually. Because if we think as the same way you're thinking, like, you know, could it be good for long on your CAD since they cut the rates, as the CAD cut the rates, that would be a good rhetoric to have a trade on. But we can't forget as well that there is a possibility of coming back to these levels here. You know, so it's just um, it's just very hard to watch. I think the clearest way would be Eurodollar. Um, and looking at this, it's it does look kind of kind of good. You know, to to have a comeback below this area. Oh, you know, maybe not that much. Maybe like somewhere here, but. Again, he's not that good. Um, but yeah, look, I'm I'm probably gonna short euro dollar on my personal portfolio. Um, but let's have a look on other ones. Let's have a look on gold. Yeah, there we have it. Gold touch it here and came back up. Exactly how we've mentioned it last Thursday and last Tuesday as well. And this Tuesday as well. Um, you know, short position here, get this swept this, and then now coming back up. That was good trade. Um maybe sort of a consolidation. And now out of the consolidation, maybe a retest somewhere around these levels and coming back up. Um, and definitely we will probably see gold breaking this high if we stay as we are. Definitely in a sense of yes. Most probably, uh, but I'm looking at three thousand, three thousand dollars as the main target for this year. All right, three thousand dollars is the main main target. Not that it will happen. It's just my target. Um. Now, if we move on and see Suva, for instance, look at how Suva has raised. Since twenty dollars, twenty thousand, all the way now to thirty thousand. Uh, sorry, 
Yeah, that's 30,000, isn't it? Yeah, that's 30,000. It's a good good investment as well to have on the portfolio. Um, US oil index, that is a very tricky one because this is pretty much, if we look like that, this is pretty much the, um, the euro dollar, but in the other side, okay? So when we look to to trade US dollar index, it's pretty much a US dollar, uh, pretty much an euro dollar, but on the other side. And we still have room. We still have plenty of room to continue to go down here. And if we look, we do have a box here, you know. So there is a possibility of a continuation down all the way there. And that is, you know, that is strengthening the euro. So this is what I mean by euro dollar getting down there, but then continue to go up to 1.10. So it's a very, very tricky scenario um, where we have some of the banks expecting, you know, some of the economists expecting a cut. Some of them um, continue to expect a cut, but then it's not starting now. Um, so very hard times. Um, I would... I would rather, of course, those times of trading, I would rather not trade. You know, I would rather stay out from the market and just wait for better opportunities, in a sense, to get in. Now, as I was saying, we have, we can't, we can't forget that we have something very, very big coming up as well uh, tomorrow. All right, tomorrow is Friday already, so. If we look here, oops, that's Thursday. Uh, well, actually, let me see. Oh, that's all right. Um, so tomorrow, right here. So we have non-farm pay rope coming up. And this is going to be huge as well because it's right after a ECB decision. And if they do cut, that's going to be even bigger influence. Um, I don't want to say that the data will get manipulated, but already saying that, <laughs> being a little bit polemic here, um, very hard to see a not high NFP. You know, maybe uh, there is two options. There is two, uh, two, two takes of this trade. We either have today Eurodollar going up and then tomorrow Eurodollar going down. Or we have euro dollar going down today and then euro dollar going up tomorrow. What I mean by this is basically, as I say, I have two scenarios of this trade. Okay. Um, I'm already I'm already writing down. Okay, let me take my note here. So if we have we have, we have two scenarios, all right. Let me take this back. Okay, we have ECB today. And we have NFP tomorrow. So if if ECB today cuts, Euro dollar goes down. And then tomorrow, NFP will come higher. Oh, sorry. Will come lower. And euro dollar goes up. These are the two scenarios, all right? They can happen. This is probably what will happen. Right, so the dollar may be stronger, maybe today or tomorrow, but definitely one of those two would be completely opposite of each other's, and then we'll drag your dollar up and your dollar down. Now, when this will happen, we don't know. But if today happens that the ECB will cut and your dollar goes down, there is a possibility of your dollar coming up back again because of the NFP will come lower. All right, so then. The euro dollar gets, uh, um, how can I say that? Um, balance it evenly, even, evenly, evenly balance it. 
I think that's the the word I would look for. Evenly balancing. Um, but the opposite can happen as well. But I'm more, more likely to this. Or I'm more I'm looking more towards this to happen than the opposite to happen. Now, we can't forget as well, as always, we need to understand that it's not only the non-farmer payroll, it's as well the unemployment rate and as well the average hourly earnings. Okay, we need to understand that this is it's a it's a triple combined news. It's not only that non-farmer payroll. If this comes as expected and this comes a bit a bit higher, that's good. But this comes lower, then it's completely out of sense. All right. Um, just don't forget about this. Now, looking at here it all again. I'm trying, trying. I think you know. I think I will. I think I will go for short today. Well, that's my trade. It's my opinion, guys. It's going to be a nice, nice one, hopefully. Now, uh, GBPUSD. Um, usually, GBPUSD gets affected by ECB, all right? But sorry, Euro pound. What I'm talking about. Usually, Euro pound gets affected by um, by the by the ECB, and here we are again on the support zone that have been here for a while already since 2000 and when is this since 2023 so have been since june 2023 so basically one year in a consolidation i right? haven't moved anywhere we can probably have a push up um but then again if they if they don't cut then euro pound would go up a very very hard market to understand very hard but there is definitely targets here to get um to get on maybe it wasn't the right time on here but we we got the target that i've mentioned last time here but still there is there is a possibility of this happen um it's not huge but there is there is a possibility um aussie dollar aussie dollar is going down again to the level I have as a target, 64. Um, CHFJPY continuing to go up. Aussie JPY, yeah, everyone got the manipulation. Euro Aussie. Euro Aussie, yes, it's going, it's going there, it's going up slowly, but it's going there, probably somewhere around these levels. Um, NZT can. No, nothing there. Yeah, look, my peak trades would be Euro Dollar, GPPOSD as well. It's a good for the non farmer payroll. But then I would trade this on a long and not on a short. But uh, that's the thing. Most of the people think that the US dollar strength has come to an end. I don't think it has come to an end. I think there is um, lots to be done <coughs> from ECB to actually, uh, sorry, from the Fed yet. Yeah um you know to bring back the, the us dollar strength um so nzd usd as well that was a good trade there continuing see just right just at my target and now I'm coming back lower um usd cad and usd cad i'm not touching it cad jpy I'm not touching as well aussie dollar most likely coming to that level, but that's a very big trade. It's a swing trade. Aussie JPY, not interested. Aussie CAD, not interested as well. Euro dollar, Euro Australian dollar. Yeah, good, good to bring it up. But again, that will be um, definitely something to watch up for the ECB tonight. NZD CAD, not looking to it. Gold, yes, looking to the new highs again. It will be interesting to see, to watch how will gold perform on NFP. Um, and then we're probably going to have CPI next week, if I'm not wrong. Let me have a look. CPI. 
CPI for the US, I think. Let me check. Yeah, there we go. So next week on Wednesday, we're going to have the CPI for the US. Expected, there's no expectations yet, um, but that's going to be nice. I think it will push up the US dollar, uh, sorry, a push up uh, the gold, right? Even if it comes, even if it comes lower. Um, and the US dollar index, yeah, most probably pushing, pushing down. Um, yeah, guys, this is pretty much it for myself. Do you guys have any questions? All right. So hopefully everyone have a good trade tonight at 10 to USCCHF. I think I've mentioned, didn't I? USCCHF. No. Swiss franc is getting definitely the strength. Definitely, definitely the strength. Did I mention something about Swiss CHF? Um, but yeah, look, very hard now, man. I would, I would prefer to, you know, in my opinion, looking at these, my portfolio doesn't fit this strategy, doesn't, doesn't fit this chart. It's just too randomized. Um, like huge moves down, huge moves down again, and then unpredictable of what can do next, like coming back very, very slowly. Mm, yeah, if it continues to go down, yeah, maybe it could come around these levels here. Um, but, you know, this big push here, it's very scary. It's kind of beat as well. Yeah, that's 2,000 points. And like, hey, this is a, oh, this is a four hour. Let me go for the one hourly. Okay, let me check. Yeah, that's 2,000 points. All right, everyone, thanks for today. Hopefully, everyone have a good weekend, and hopefully next week it can be better. Could look up with the link to rewatch again, and Mr. P. Well, uh, definitely, um, definitely, yep, I will, I will do that. Um, on the tomorrow, I will send the link into the Telegram. So be there and uh, you will be able to rewatch it. Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend and uh, see you later. See you. Bye bye.